when I put forward a woman for staffing, very often, she is questioned by the studio and the network. Can she write this? Does she do, can she do this? Da, da, da. She, she is examined in a way that male writers are not. I was on a, uh, a show in which we had a female writing team and they uh, were not that vocal in, in the, the team. And the showrunner and I met with them and said, well, well, an area to improve would be to speak up. The writing team came to me and said, watch what happens when we try to speak up. And I sat for an entire morning and I just watched the participants in the room debate ideas, throw out ideas, challenge them, you know. But I watched, I didn't really participate. And I realized that every time the women spoke up, they never could finish their sentence. Someone stepped on their line, someone took the pitch, someone challenged them, cut them off. They, people raised their voices, called them honey. I realized that being in an authority, a position of authority in that room, I was part of that problem because my male ear was tuned to the male interrupter. And this was something that I realized I had a behavior in that every time they were interrupted, my head went that way. So I was part of the problem. So I had to unlearn that behavior and I've imposed a, a no interruption rule that if somebody is presenting prepared material, you know, give them the floor and take notes and then, and then just, you know, rip it up afterwards. Now, in a free flowing debate, everyone's interrupting everybody. But it's up to me as the person who's running the room or the showrunner, I then became a showrunner, to make sure that everybody does get their say, that everybody is listened to. And, and, and that takes some corrective behavior. Interrupting is just a, a, a male impatience with the female voice. So the minute she starts to say something, the man interrupts, he speaks over her, he raises his voice to shout her down. You know, and, and I realize that men are not generous to women when they are going through their creative process. Uh, there was an aha moment where I realized that it was important to have other people in the room, uh, non-white men, just because I, I was, found myself writing things that, that felt inauthentic. And the moment that I realized there was a problem was when I reached out to agencies to send me other writers, and they said, we don't have any. And someone actually said, I understand, you're covering your ass for some reason, we're gonna send you some more white men. He actually said white men. Yes. And that was, really interesting. And there have been times in which I have put forward writers of color or women and people look at me as if I'm bizarre. That, that why would I possibly do this? So there was one room in which I, we were developing a staff, hiring a brand new staff, and I um, had one configuration that had more women than men. And a male showrunner asked me if we were just gonna sit around and talk about our periods all day. He would not have it. He would have one, maybe two women in the room. So I brought this forward at the Writers Guild and I realized that there was a lot of hostility of writers against writers, okay, where people were angry that they weren't getting jobs. They were, you know, there's one writer, a, a, a woman I know who, you know, just feels that she, is only getting offered, you know, romantic comedies. You know, she loves writing action movies, you know. They, a, a lot of women love writing horror. Men can get pigeonholed, but they, they're allowed, they're afforded the opportunity to, to stretch and to write new material, and people will look at that material. People may not read a horror script from a woman, they, they may not read a sci-fi script 
from a woman. They will just assume she doesn't have any. I've seen this on sets. An, an actor, okay, if a male actor has a question, very often a male director and the male writer or showrunner will come out and we'll talk about the scene and we'll try to figure it out, what does it mean, and we'll get behind it and everybody gets to be in film school for a minute and blah, blah, blah. Woman asks the same kind of question and people say, she's a pain in the ass, why can't she hit her mark and just say the line? And I've seen this happen on many, many shows. And I've seen women have their voices shut down because people don't want to hear from them. I've been on a show in which a woman wrote the best episode of the season. And the male showrunner did not even acknowledge that she had turned in a script. They would never do that to a male writer. And, and there is just a way that women writers are treated. Very often male writers just, the assumption is they can do their job. The question for the female writers is, can they really do their job? And it feels like people are looking for any reason to say no to women.